good. Let's see what it is. It's still morning here. Good morning. <laughs> For five more minutes. It's almost, it's almost afternoon. Um, yesterday I shared how I had done this painting. And this was just kind of a free time afternoon play loose. I really like to do like I've shown you before, just put the water in and then drop in the pigment. And I really like the way, the results that I get. And someone in our group asked me if I would do a tutorial. Well, I don't really do tutorials. I'm not a teacher, but um, I can absolutely share um, the, um, technique that I used. It's one that I really enjoy. These are my two handy dandy brushes. I seems like I go to these all the time. It's my large Levinson with, I think this is like one and a half super tip, fine tip, goat hair synthetic blend. And this is my medium. Yeah, this is my medium. Also synthetic, also has a great tip. I just kind of go with these these are my standard brushes that I use. Um, can, I just like them extremely well. So I use them a lot, and that's what I use for this painting. I did use my Daniel Smith paints uh, that I've just recently refilled with my fresh tubes. And I try to remember the colors that I used. So um, I put my colors and my marks that I like to make on this little sheet of paper. This particular paper right here is 300 pound and that's what this was yesterday. These are some of my little wet marks that I make that I kind of fill in with color. So there's no real magic to it actually. I just take my brush and um, make a wet mark on the page and then I drip in my color. Um, after I put these on, my son called me, and then as, as I went to label them, I was, couldn't quite remember what I had used. So, but I think I got this correct. I started with uh, the jadeite, I mean, green Appetite Genuine, which is a granulating color. And you can see the granulation, especially um, in this one. You see how it granulated in here and then down here and then you let it dry. It's got some really nice marks. Um, and up in here. Then I also came back in later with some jadeite green, which is also a granulation, granulating color. Uh, I believe this in here is Quinn Rose and some Rose of Ultramarine. This kind of has a blue tint to it as it dries, or purple almost. Opera Pink. Did a little bit of opera pink. Um, I think this is Rose of Ultramarine. Some of these lighter ones. Some lavender. Some wisteria. And he, up in here for the lighter colors. And some rhodonite genuine. I may not have spelled this correctly, but that's also a... Um, granulating and Mayan blue. I like the Mayan blue. That's also a granulating color. What I did differently with this painting than I often do, and it may be one reason that it worked, <laughs> um, is I did my foliage first. So let's begin and I'll show you what I did. Uh, what I like to do is just wet the paper first. So in this particular case, I came down here like this, up in here. I did like a diagonal shape that way. Some up in here. So it's just kind of springing out from the, um, from the center, but whoops, I've got some paint on there. But that's okay. It's, it's all gonna come off, come on in a minute anyway. Then what I did is um, 
while this is wet. And of course, no two paintings are gonna be the same. I am going to get a little bit of this, these drips up. This is just a technique that I like. I like wet on wet, but I also really enjoy um, this technique of just kind of coming in, dropping my colors into the wet paint, I mean wet page, and watching them disperse. Um, I think that doing my foliage first on this one actually helped me because um, I always say I'm foliage challenged. But I think maybe it's because I try to do my foliage last. So this seemed to work better. This is going to be a little bit lighter as we come down here. Now, um, I'm not... Uh, mixing my pre-mixing my colors I'm doing that on paper just if I want a different look I just kind of rearrange my position in which I'm holding my brush so I'm gonna let that start to say melt I'm gonna let this uh, sit for a minute so this is my green appetite genuinely put a little bit more in here pigment straight from the box. And as you know, the pigment will only go where the water has been or will take it. You can move it around a little bit. And uh, so I got some foliage here. You can always come in with some more or change it if you like as you go. All right, Nick, now I'm gonna change brushes to, this was for my large shape. I'm gonna change brushes to my, um, I think this is a medium. And I'm gonna kinda come in here lightly with some colors. And I think yesterday, I actually started with my Quinn Rose. So now I'm gonna kinda I'm going straight from the palette. My paint is wet. I'm not pre-mixing, but I'm, this brush makes some lovely petal marks. So I'm overlapping a little bit into my water as well as on the dry paper. So some is gonna have a hard line, some is gonna have a soft line. I like that. Let me do another one over here. Let's have one coming out here. A little more water, so it's not quite as intense. Change my brush around a little bit. When I say change my brush around, I just mean the manner in which I'm holding, holding it. Let's soften that out some. And of course we know uh, that it'll dry lighter. Yeah, I'm gonna go in and soften this. I hadn't really planned on this. See, it's never the same twice. <laughs> That's just kind of the way it works. Never quite have the same. I'm gonna do one more Rose of Ultramarine coming out down here from our center. And I really like the marks that I can make with this brush. Really enjoy it. Uh, the next color that I think that I went in with was right next to it, is in the way that I have it set up. And this is my Rose of Ultramarine. So this is a darker purple, a little more intense here. Let's come in here and make some, you know, your darker shades are always on the bottom and, and it will dry lighter. 
Let's give some of this flower up here some company. Uh, when I did this uh, swatch card here to show you the colors I used, I also showed you kind of the water shapes that I use with my brush. So that's why they're not just swatches. I go in with my water and I make the different marks with the water and then um, drop in my pigment. So this also not only was the colors, but kind of the shapes that I like to make. All right, I like the combinations I'm getting here. This is, um, like I say, I'm not pre-mixing on my palette. I'm letting the colors mix on their own in the wet and wet. And I know I've got a hair up there, but it'll come off when I, when I come down. Then I wanted to add some blue to this. Uh, well, actually, we're going to stay with our lighter colors first. So I'm going to come in with some lavender. This particular lavender has a bit of an opaque quality to it. Um, as well as the West Wisteria, but it's really quite lovely. I think we'll add some down here as well. I don't want to get myself too focused all on the same area. I have a tendency to do that and then I regret it later. <laughs> I was like, oh, everything is right there. You need to move on and add some more colors elsewhere. Put some little lavender down in here. Here we go. Just a suggestion of petals. Um, I'm really liking this already. Let's do some, um, I'm gonna do some wisteria. This is also a pale color and also somewhat, um, opaque but the others are uh, transparent so the West wisteria and the lavender both have some opaque qualities to it uh, just do a couple little little doodad flowers coming down there I'll let this dry a little bit you can see as it's drying that it does get lighter I'll try to brush off this cat hair that's not coming off. It'll come off when it dries. I do want to come back in and add some more green, however. This was the Green Appetite Genuine, and you can see the beautiful granulation marks here. Down here is actually kind of pale. There's a puddle there. I want to come back in with a different green, and this time I'm going to use, um, this is olive green. just to enhance what I already have in there. Not a lot, just a hint of some foliage. Like I say, I'm foliage challenged. Like right there when I just did that, I feel like I already did too much, but um, I'll go back in and we can maybe take Oh, stop fussing. Stop fussing. One thing I've learned is that when you start to fuss, you inadvertently draw attention to that area. So I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to add some more down here. This is the olive green on top of the, what I used earlier was the jadeite to give a little different color. Let that run. All right, so I'm liking that. I'll let this dry a little bit more. Um, 
ready to put some more color in on some of these areas. Another color that I used was the, um, let's see, the Mayan blue. This is my Mayan blue. This is also a granulating color. So basically what I'm doing, um, where someone asked for a tutorial, this isn't really a tutorial, it just happens to be the style that I enjoy, is I like to just take my water with the page and then come in with my brush pigment straight out of the palette and let them play together. I'm gonna add some more Mayan blue over here in this area. A different shade of blue. I think that would be pretty. I never set out to really um, paint realistically, so to speak. Give this area some blue highlight to get some little something coming out. Um, my desire was always, I, I don't know, I just like freestyle. And um, now, see, my temptation right now is to come back in here, but I'm not going to do it yet because it's still too wet. And I think that I would really mess it up. Come back in here with some of my you see how lovely how beautifully that just kind of goes on its own with the water that's the technique that I really really enjoy the water in my pan kind of resting on top of my color so when I pick it up I'm getting a really nice uh, consistency of pigment I like that. I really like that where it's running. And then I'm just gonna let it kind of do its thing. Let me come down in here. Now, I think I may have too much water in there. So, oh. But I'm just gonna leave it, let it run. Let it do its, let it do its thing. As we used to say in the 60s. If any of y'all are that old. Okay, I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute. I like what it's doing. I am gonna get this puddle up right here. I don't want that one. That one's kind of pretty. Um, but I like the way things are diffusing and um, granulating. I'm gonna stop my video here. No, I'm not. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. Let me come back in here. As it begins to dry, you can use a little bit heavier pigment. Put, you know, be a little heavier on your pigment load on your brush. Um, I saw a tutorial the other day when, it, um, and he said that when you're paper is wet, your paint is alive. I thought that was interesting. So you got to remember that it's going to be moving and um, and when that begins to dry, then you use 
a thicker pigment so you don't get the blooms and blossoms. Of course, in this case, I'm making blooms and blossoms, but um, I'm just kind of going an automatic right now. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna stop for now and I'm gonna let this dry. She says as she goes back in with some more green. It's that green appetite genuine. I just wanna kinda of add to these this foliage here. So it's not totally wet. This is 300 pound paper, so it dries more slowly. And um, I really, really enjoy, let's blend out some of this down here. Let's just get some soft edges down here. I really enjoy the uh, 300 pound paper. I really do. Um, It's more expensive, but yet um, I like the texture that I get with it and um, get some soft edges over here. I think I'm going to put some wisteria in here. Wisteria is the color of the paint, not the flower. <laughs> I don't know if I like that or not. Let me add a little bit of rose ultramarine on top. There, I like that. I like just letting them uh, combine on the paper instead of mixing ahead of time. I do think I have too much of a heaviness of my rose of ultramarine in here. But I think what I'm gonna do is we just do some little droplets of water. Because when you do that at this stage, it will kind of diffuse out and give it a little bit of a different texture. So that might help to break up that heavy concentration of color there. Because um, I really, it's not really what I intended. But you know, watercolor has a mind of its own and it's gonna do what it intended to do. So that is a brief, very brief uh, demo of sorts of how I did my painting yesterday. I noticed that today my strokes are bolder and uh, these are smaller. <laughs> So that's interesting. Maybe that's just the time of day or the mood. Um, but that's it for today. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, Dee, thank you for asking me to give you an example. Uh, I just wet my spots. Here's some examples of shapes with water. And then I drip in my pigment and let it go. That's my fun relaxing way that I like to paint. So I hope you follow your brush and see where it takes you. Bye.